What's up guys, my name's Luke and I am a full-time Rocket League coach. My challenge today is to explain one concept in five levels of difficulty. The topic, rotation. <laughs> I'm confident that everybody watching can walk away with some level of understanding. Also, we just finalized the roster for season three of my private coaching program. If you didn't know, I run a six week live coaching program that launches once every season. And I'll be accepting early enrollment for our fall roster shortly after this video comes out. So if you're interested and are 18 plus years old, head down to the description and DM me the word rotation on Discord. Anyways, let's get into this. So yeah, are you familiar with the concept of first man, second man, third man, Nick? Not a lot. All it stands for is this. First man is first in line. Second man okay. is second in line. And third man is third in line. You're gonna have to dumb it down for me, Luke. I don't understand all that. <laughs> That's funny. This is all relative to who's going for the ball. That's all it means. Okay. Okay. And so the way that you figure out which man you are in rotation is you look at your teammates. Okay. And so something I'm seeing here is you are often very, very confused as to where you should be in line. So let's do a little exercise. Let's look at your teammates here. How many of your teammates are facing and playing the ball? These two guys right now are both facing backwards. So given that knowledge, what role are you? I guess I'm first man. That's absolutely right. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And so you do exactly what you should do here, which is go challenge the ball. And look what happens. You save it and you put it over to the opponents. That's something I'm definitely going to think about uh, where I am on the field in relation to my teammates, where their cars are pointed in relation to the ball and the ball's trajectory. Yeah, I think that'll help a lot, I think. Do you know why I brought you here? You know what the topic for today is, uh, Kevin? Uh I, I, I don't, but I'm assuming if it goes with what we were learning in GCR, it's about rotations and working <laughs> that out. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You're smart. You're too smart for me. Today, one of the things I want to talk about is back post rotations and ranges. Are you familiar with what a range is in Rocket League? Um, A little bit. So typically when I think of range in Rocket League, it's like how much I can play the ball. Um, like, like, so typically, obviously, if you're driving forward, it's going to be, you know, how much left can I guard? How much right can I guard? How much in front of me? Yeah, that's absolutely right. You, you explained it perfectly. Basically, a range is, it's just the area on the field that you could play and you can cover, let's say, at any given time. Right, so in this scenario here, um, I see you parked um, coming off spawn. You're moving fairly slowly. So I'd say your range is something out here, right? Something like that. Yep, that's fair. And the ultimate goal with rotations, let's say, um, at least for starters, is just to cover as much of the field as possible with your rotations, right? I'm noticing you're doing a very good job already of rotating back post. You must be familiar with back post, aren't you? Oh yeah. For those people who don't know what back post is, can you, can you explain what back post is to them? Yeah, it's easy. So when the ball, especially on a defensive side, when the ball is coming up, towards a certain corner, um, like as you see it on the left side there. So the only way that a shot is gonna be coming in from that angle is gonna be left to right. So if you're on the right side of the of the goal, then you're gonna be always driving forward towards the ball to, to make that save. So like we were talking about before, it's always easier to save and hit the ball in front of you rather than trying to backflip and half flip into it, so. Yeah, this guy's in the coaching program. Come on, that was awesome. That was better than I could have explained it. Good stuff. And you see that exactly here because we watch like your rotation right here and pause right when you rotate back around here. You can see easily because you rotated the way you did, your range is now going to come around here and you're going to be able to cover everything in front of the net. Whereas what a lot mm -hmm. of people would do is, yeah, they'd rotate on the ball and then they'd be facing this way and then they wouldn't be able to save a shot coming across. So very good, very good. That was that was freaking killer. That's awesome, Kevin. Hey, thanks for coming on, man. Not a problem, man. Thank you. He actually missed. Wait, did Spooko just message me? Is that what I just saw on my top left? Oh. Uh, 
Spook Loop just messaged me. <laughs> um, he wants me to be in the video. Oh god, he's got over 100k subscribers. Why don't you introduce yourself? What are your current uh, competitive ranks? Um, I am a Diamond 3 in doubles, a Diamond 1 in threes, and a Diamond 1 in ones. Got you, got you. Yeah, so that, yeah, right, sitting at that, like, diamond area, right? My focus with you is going to be off-ball rotations. Are you familiar with what those things are? I, I think so. Uh, not really. <laughs> so something I want to talk about with you already, and this is coming into play, is, yes, something called off-ball rotations. I can tell you're a freestyler. <laughs> I can tell you're a freestyler. Box, this is hilarious already. So... Here's the thing about off-ball rotations, is it means when you're rotating back around, whether you're on offense, whether you're on defense, you want to rotate opposite ball side. And so here in this situation, it's clear that the ball is heading off to the left, but we see you doing a short rotation here and rotating with the ball. This is called rotating on the ball side. This would be the ball side. This over on the right, in this situation would be the off ball side or what some people like to call weak side. Does that make sense? What uh, off ball rotations are versus yeah. on, on the ball rotations? Yeah, I think I've heard of it before. I just have not applied it at all. I hope that was helpful. Yeah, it definitely was. I'm opening it up here. We'll jump right in. So yeah, you're my level four, Sean. We'll switch over to your perspective here. We're gonna take it a level further and break down some of the nuances of rotation that I've learned from playing at you know GC, GC1, GC3, and even SSL recently. I've been playing some SSL games. I'm gonna focus mostly on rotation, but if this touch was a little softer to the side, that would have been better, been able to follow it mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. um, you're gonna challenge, beautiful. Just challenge his first man take the boost and rotate out. I like this play a lot. And you're gonna 50 this ball and ah, so this is something that was hard to pick up. Um, but your teammate just got demoed on the right side. Um, oh, he did. Uh -huh. So if we watch here, he was on your camera, boom. You see that smoke? Oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah. you caught that really well. <laughs> yeah, so in this situation, this is where you're starting to, you're in GC, right? Or at, at the breaking point, you're gonna start to get into the point where rotational demos, as you could see here, are becoming mm -hmm. more and more uh, prevalent, let's say. And so something that's going to be important for you is being able to adjust to those demos. And we see here, um, if you hit this ball into the corner and your teammate was rotating up here, I would say he's first man. But when mm -hmm. your first man gets demoed like this and now you are the closest one to the ball, you are now in charge of this play. Very nice hit over to the corner. I like that play a lot. Um, not a rotation tip, but uh, hold power slide, right? Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't joined the course yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Your team's making some nice plays. Ooh, let's break this down, okay? So this, your positioning is fine here, actually. Um, I'd like to see you moving up the center of the field, so you're going to rotate. Yeah, yeah. I actually, and I, and I agree with you here because... Um, in this scenario, uh, Hub No Lover is like he's covering the right side, so there's really no one ready for the actual advancing position here. Right, exactly. Yeah. And then you and then you see what happens when when you position too far back here. What do we call this, Sean? You know what this is called now, don't you? Threat gap. Threat. Threat this gap. Is, okay. Th this is what's called a threat gap. At the lower levels, it's safer to just tell people get back and wait for them to bring the ball to you. But mm -hmm. once you get to champ and GC, it's important that you don't allow too much space between yourself and the opponents. Why? Mm -hmm. Because a GC player is not good enough to hit the ball right away, but they're good enough to hit the ball and make a, and set up a play if you give them this much space. You know what I'm saying? And the whole idea behind just a general tight rotation is that it's okay to let them have the ball, but not okay to allow them the time to set up a play. Brilliant. That's exactly it. Mm -hmm. What what I would recommend you do here is I can tell that you are ca being cautious, right? Your teammates are clearly first and second, and so they are going for the ball, and you are third, and you know that, so that's why you end up going this route. But what I'd like to see you do is instead play the aggressive option, and mm -hmm. if you feel concerned that the ball is going to go overhead, simply pivot your car sideways and get ready to face backwards. 
Mm -hmm. something I call upfield shadow defense. It's when you play upfield as the third man, but you turn your car sideways or away from the play. That way you are close enough to pounce on the offensive attack, but but facing backward enough to get a ball that's hit overhead and shot on net. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, all right, beautiful. So we are currently checking out uh canada versus team usa here i'm with coach curtis curtis i mean to the people like watching who don't know you introduce yourself say what's up ranks all the rest of it yeah hello i am rlcs coach with a lot of experience uh i look at my clips the next day like the recently created cri clips i never do that i just happen mm -hmm. to look and i guess i'll say that Co you know coach curtis he made over like 50 clips of everything we were doing. Like he analyzed everything for his team. I've coached a lot of people, uh, people like Shadow, Demo Cat, uh, Player, uh, First Killer, etc. Hey, maybe we want to watch from First Killer's perspective then? I mean, the first thing that I noticed was like right here, like this was just really, really smart team awareness, right? Yep, it's what's considered play empty space. He knows that he has to deny uh, squishy going all the way without being contested. He knows that the average is too close. He cannot play that. Uh, also, Chicago is out of the play. So he knows, hey, I need to intercept this before. You know, just giving yourself multiple opportunities in defense. That's pretty much what it is. Yeah, this is beautiful. This is, I think, what we'd call, uh, it's, it's not forcing, but it's knowing how to play his first map. He sees both of his teammates rotating back. He sees, oh, I am first in line to hit this ball. And so by going up for this ball, I think the really genius part of what this does is it allows the orange team, if we go to this perspective, it allows them multiple layers of defense. Because now, first killer is going to block him here, and then Garrett G's on the backboard, and he's going to block him here. So they get two times tries, whereas a lot of players would just wait for the ball to get to the goal line, and then they would only get one defensive opportunity. You know what I'm saying? So this is interesting, Curtis, because a second ago, we see that um, first killer is first to the ball and he goes up and he challenges really, really early. Now we see in this play, after the ball kind of gets by Garrett a little bit here, first killer makes a different decision. Can you explain why you think first killer did what he did here? Uh, to be honest, he's respecting his opponent. Uh, also, Chicago doesn't need to fully rotate. If that pinches across the map, he can play that, or midfield, right? So now, uh, generally speaking, Chicago was closer. His rotation fully back would take longer. So if that bounces out appropriately middle, he's able to play that. And then first killer just goes all the way back. So they understand, hey, do I really need to play this? Answer is no, when your teammate is slower with rotation. That's what's considered extension. Even though in this scenario it wasn't fully extension, it was possibility for that. And yeah. generally speaking, another thing that is, uh, first killer is just playing safe, you know? At this rank, you never want to be risking anything because the moment you start playing the uh, Ambitious is the moment when you're gonna get scored on because people will recognize, hey, this guy just barely overstepped his position. He's not respecting me. Let me put it past him because it's that easy. Yeah, I think the take home lesson here is get is we're watching here. We see Garrett hit the play. Like the way that I see this is first killer sees his back right now. He sees Chicago is all the way up here, right? He knows he has to buy time. Right, because he's third man. He's clearly third. He's in the he's last man back. Yeah. And so he's just buying time, buying time, buying time. He kind of goes up, makes squishy, thinks he's going to go. Then he turns back and starts shadowing, watching the pinch, perfectly positioned, perfect spacing. And then he just waits, 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 make a soft touch, buy even more time, right? Buy even more time, buy more time. He gets a team demo, buy more time. And he's just, yeah. he knows how much space he has and he uses it perfectly. Dishes it yes, right off the and, Chicago. Uh, yeah, and people might not uh, pay attention to that demo, but that demo is so huge because now they can continue the midfield play. They can get out of defense for free. Because now, generally speaking, if Squishy gets this tackle for free, uh, just difference of momentum will be very difficult to not get dunked and uh, to just generally get out of defense. It will require first killer to use a lot of boost to outplay 
uh, yeah. because of momentum difference. So that's huge. This is this was crazy to me to see. Like you see, first killer rotate around here. Um, ball's gonna come up. Alshin's gonna clear it. Garrett G's prepared on the wall. Very very nice there. Um, good good dish out. Look at this from first killer. What do you think of this play? Oh my gosh, <laughs> ceiling. 50. <laughs> Ceiling 50. Yeah, uh, that yeah, is standard high-level play. Uh, there's nothing surprising about that. Look uh, at that, and then this too. Um, you see the, the rotational demo, right? As first killer comes around, yep. he sees Alishin. Boom. <laughs> that's not that's not gonna happen. <laughs> He's going yeah, straight. Uh, a little bit of a mistake on Alushin's part. Uh, he's just sitting there. That should have never happened. Uh, yeah. yeah. He's just doing a mistake, a little bit uh, too slow sitting at still. Yeah. And we see how that almost instantly leads to a goal. It's the little, like, we see how little bumps and little demos at the highest level are so important because unless you disrupt it, it's really hard to, you know, beat a team just one on one if they're if they're as good as these players are. So when you clear a demo, that's that's a huge advantage for for whichever team gets it, right? Yep, especially when you demo the third guy. Then your his teammates will need to rush back and probably won't co be controlled with it as much as uh, naturally thirds would be. Yeah, and that's where like, I mean, you see it here. It's so funny you bring up how important third man kills are. What happens 10 seconds later? Squishy is hunting down <laughs> first killer right here, <laughs> right? Because yep. you're right, if, first, if Squishy kills first killer, and Alishin just does anything to get the ball center over Chicago, Jane Apps gets a free goal, right? That's exactly. why it's so important. Exactly. Look at this funny moment, just the mind games, the mind games of high level play. Jane Apps goes up and it looks like he's about to like air dribble this, but because Chicago thinks he can air dribble this, he kind of, he pre jumps, but Jane Apps misses his pre flip. So then Chicago's hovering and he like hits it down. Alishin fake challenges. Then first killer realizes this ball right here is rotating toward, even though it's closer to first killer now, it's going towards Squishy. So it's actually closer to Squishy. So then first killer pre-flips this to get the 50 with Squishy. It's like there's just so many levels and levels. Wow. That was a phenomenal game to analyze. I'm glad we, you got to come on for it. That was awesome, Curtis. Hey, to anybody watching um, in the Discord, Curtis will be linked. Curtis, thank you so much for coming on today, man. That was awesome. No worries. Thank you for having me. Fight. So there you have it. That was Rocket League Coach Explains Rotation at five levels of difficulty. That's all I've got for this video. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace guys.